start out with the pistol. Puts the pressure back on Heroic. Afeni, woohoo. Tess almost puts his head in that crosshair. Fire will cause a problem here for Heroic. But they're gonna pressure it back with a nade of their own, and sure enough, it finds Nafany. So, no easy in just yet. Tess has softened, Jabby right there with him, but a lot of bodies for Heroic in behind this wall. And shots go both ways. Axile just peppering everything. And now Tess is looking for that wall time boost, but even if the boost doesn't get him a kill, it should get them information. There's nobody here. Shiro's gonna walk up, takes the deagle damage, catches Tess and doesn't die. That's the critical point. Three points of health makes the difference, and we're gonna get Cloud9 rocking the boat into B, which is completely clear for the taking. Yeah, yeah, so they do manage to find a way around. Heroic like to rotate completely as a pack, are very comfortable gambling. Cloud9 also know how to work both parts of the map on T side and aren't scared to make that kind of longer rotation walking back from site to site. So there will be a lot of rounds, I think, where they'll actually meet open bomb sites and conversely, rounds where they'll meet completely stacked bomb sites. I can, I can only imagine what kind of crazy situations we're going to find ourselves in in this match. Yeah, feels we are like looking at a heroic on a nine match win streak coming into Ooh. this series, but Cloud9 on a five series win streak and their last two games were wins over Navi and FaZe. They have the hardest, the hardest possible Legends run going on right now. And, and if it's going to be 3-0, they'll have to do it versus one of their biggest, if not their biggest rival in history. Oof, Shiro. They're, they're shooting hot at the moment. Racking them up here with the little HP that's left over. Three health, three more kills, four on the round. We want to talk about their Legends run. Let's not forget Cloud9, 0-2. Run it all the way back. An incredible run. Never before seen since. That's just Cloud9 fashion. The last Cloud9 and run in Boston. Completely different players, completely different time. Opposition looks entirely different, and yet here we are. It's that Cloud9 magic. That same resilient North American energy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take credit that's for it. That's what we're known for. And listen, when, when they were playing in Dallas on that stage, there were USA chants for Cloud9's wins. And I think that just means they've been adopted. Yeah, and uh, they embrace it totally. Talking to Hobbit, just uh, feels so blessed to have the fans, and the fans are incredible for Cloud9, of course. Very supportive bunch. I, uh, I don't know what happens in this in this series. It, it, it's, it was just ludicrous to think that, you know, that we could be on the other side. Cloud9 winning this series. They're in top eight, the first team to get the top eight with the hardest run possible after the worst challenger start possible. Just absolutely absurd. Then they knock out a lot of the targets that they would be worried about playing in playoffs yep. straight away. We know that they can perform the comebacks and they're also proving that they're getting better by the match. And if they do it, they're going up against a very strong heroic right now, also 2-0, played against Fnatic and Outsiders, and even though those teams are not as good as Navi or FaZe, 16-2 versus Fnatic, 69 versus Outsiders, no small feat whatsoever. And the other thing, at least about the Vertigo now, is that they have Yabby, who on Copenhagen Flames, loved this map, he was a core part of it, and that could be a buff. Desert Eagle for Shush. The only piece here for Heroic that could maybe throw something upside down, but Cloud9 going to make money in mid. Hobbit feasting at the moment. Will be dropped eventually by, of course, the Desert Eagle. Shiro, not going to waste any time. Goes through that A site with conviction. He's going to come up and probably clear Tess as well. Sure enough, single casualty, no big deal for Cloud9. It's that 3-0 start they'd hoped for. Shiro chucks the MP9 down <laughs> to the earth because now he's gunning with the op. Yeah, okay. I think there's a lot of fans here from both sides, to be honest. Uh, if you're here for the challenger stage, you got to be a fan of Cloud9, watching them play for you. They definitely delivered a lot of very exciting matches. Heroic come ready, prim and proper with their new jerseys. I mean, go into the first rifle round to set the mood. Both analysts expecting a close match, despite predicting Cloud9 2-0. It is a throwback for Cloud9, of course, to find themselves on Vertigo to start this series. It's so insane that these teams haven't even played a series this year. And this is where it they is end wild. up doing it, yeah. yeah. 
hell of a time, right? Not not even wasting anything on a best of one or some random event or anything online. No, just straight to the qualification of the top eight of a yeah. major. I mean, that's really sometimes when Counter Strike is blessed by this idea of less is more. Yeah. You know, save the good ones like this. Yeah, we kind of have to get lucky because the circuit is always so rammed. And then we get special moments like this. C9 said that they wanted new opponents. They've had to play phase. They've had to play Vitality. They got their game versus Navi. They won it. And now here they are, BO3 against Heroic. Hobbit finds the lineup through smoke. Then Stown burns. But Tess three backs turned. Who reacts fast enough, if anyone at all? Two. And Hobbit again. Not only getting the first through the smoke, but a savior in the sense that that player up ahead looked like he was dead. Axile wounded, but at least lucky enough to walk away with Nafani at his side. They leave a bunch of nades here on the ramp, work back over, but look who's waiting for them. Shush, he doesn't overthink this. Low HP cut players coming his way. Nice angle. Three peaks there, but smoke in hand means he can't get a quick second. Shush extends back, and as he does kill Hobbit, it's Nafani with the headshot. Him versus Javi in a one versus one. Just a few seconds left, and Nafani rounds the orange boxes. He could go all the way around that smoke. Jabby, not sure which way to look. Caught between the two, and Nafany slides all the way, oh. all the way through with the clutch to close. Two kills in four rounds for Cloud9. The visualization there is perfect, right? Jabby could have been anywhere, and he wraps that smoke, plays off the timings. Jabby tries to read into it, but doesn't know if Nafany was sitting, waiting, and chilling. And here is a really classic C9 round waiting on the ramp behind the smoke. This is, you know, a vertigo of old, but it's uh, a matchup of old as well. And they punish everybody for sitting in their usual positions without even having to see half the targets. The third player there in Tessas, it's the one they forget about because it was such a heavy defense without him. And now Heroic after losing that round, four, five, seven, one M4 for Shush. Hobbit already 10 and 2, Shiro 6 and 2. Shout out Hobbit because during the challenger stage again, when we had an absent Axile, we looked at Shiro, we needed a second player to do something, and it was Hobbit on a couple of those maps. You know, this is the experience that was interjected into the heroic, or excuse me, Gambit youngsters. Can't forget, major champion. Shush. Oh. He's gonna die. Oh. Hobbit finds the mark off the grenade as well. Oh. And well, Kadian welcomes some bullets in return. M4 exchanges hands to those of Tess And Nafany looking like he's got a little bloodlust. Tess desperate reload, lost his teammate, all that's left, and he gets blindsided. It's Jeez. a flawless one from Cloud9 as they just shred that A site defense. There's a lot of composure here. I always I always think of chess when I think of Cloud9 because they really know how to keep tension, build their position out, make power moves to slowly crush the defense and then explode only at its apex when they know they're going to win. And Heroic are just the antithesis of all of that, you know, playing to totally off of updating info as much as possible. Aggressive plays right out the gate, trying to make sure that the game is played the way they want to and are very comfortable in doing so. But right now they're starting to struggle and Heroic, Heroic did not play on the stage yet, did they? because we didn't cast their games yesterday. It's possible they played afterwards. Yeah, we didn't cast the last four. Let's see, actually. Good question. Outsiders was definitely the B stream, and that's oh, where they maybe started. Fnatic. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, maybe, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe they've played one. It's important as they're here now. Indeed. And uh, honestly, I think it's a more pressured game as well. Yeah, quite a bit of uh, support for Heroic out of the crowd early on. It's kind of curious. You never know which way it's going to go. It's always loud, but uh, when there aren't Brazilians on stage, it's fun to figure out the favoritism. Tessas puts some shots through smoke, not going to find anything. Cloud9 playing protective and leading now with Nafani up the ramp. He's ahead of the flashbang, not going to be a problem. Ready, but Tess nice, slides out a little further. Spam damage comes back, half of Tess health gone. Yeah, but he doesn't leave and he keeps vision. And C9 look to bail out. Let's see if they come back. They're juggling things at the moment at the bottom of the ramp. 
Hobbit trying to create a question mark, but uh, Tess S is Tess already S. deeper. He made the move, yeah. Yeah, they thought he would leave off of this. Let's see if they swing on him. It's hard to say if they're actually coming back, but it looks like they might. Uh-oh. Not ready. Nope. Looking deeper up the tarp instead. And so Tess S, whoa, almost, almost dies on the fallback. Oh. Aid got him. Enters with the homing missile. So it's still a nice two kills from Tess S. Does his job on ramp and then some. But it leaves Cloud9 in a critical 30-second period. They're split up quite heavily. Two people coming up the ramp. That could be big. Axel's got the flank, though. That could I mean, be this is massive, yeah. Jabby's back turned. Oh, they have 20 seconds, so he's got to go kind of fast, but... Flash blinds him. Whoa! What? Enters, holds on, and Axile's got that timing! Perfect in from Elevator. Two players turn. They're so concerned with ramp where Cloud9 wow. were consistent, and it leaves Shush 1v3. Can you believe that spray from Enters? He was Dude. blind for almost all of it. And that's, I mean, if, if, if he dies then and there, odds are maybe one turns towards mid. Regardless, Axile. Just the golden ticket, yeah. perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. And uh, well-timed lurks have been an interesting thing to kind of talk about with a lot of different players. And of course, he's one of the better ones. Lurking, it doesn't have the same glory that it once had in early CSGO days. And players like, you know, Get Right Adosho were the number one or best players or most, fear, most fearful players, fearsome players in the world. These days, it's something you do sometimes, but even your lurkers don't always do them as much. But you still put very strong riflers in these positions, almost always star riflers, in fact. And of course, when we talk about stars, we have to talk about Axile. Who, oh, uh, I can't even. I had to look away. I had to look away. <laughs> well, I looked at it, but now I'm nauseous. Miss me with those roller coasters. Well, good start. Very good start. 6-0. C9. Now this just looks like the C9 we know. Not the C9 from last week. It's the one that we all hoped would show up right away. Yeah. And then all the ones that we doubted once we saw the start of that challenger stage. And if we get the heroic that we know, this will be 30 rounds. The sure. next map will be 30 rounds, Game absolutely. On. But for now, it's just C9. It's been some close moments, but there's also been some nice layers from C9's Vertigo so far. Bodies lining up, and Jabby can only take the one. It would have been too dangerous of a repeak. And oh, Tess that S nade! Oh my again. god! Axel to heaven. How many rounds are we going to see Cloud9 just chip one off with the frag? Tess blinds Axile, forces him off his angle, but now he comes back with that element of surprise. Stown's got the trade, him and Kadian up into this retake. We've got Shiro scoped towards stairs. Kadian's trying to work Ooh. up from green, but his counterpart in Shiro succeeds already. And with that, the life drains from Kadian. 7-0 start for Cloud9's no, T side. Can't even talk. Every single round has been really great. I mean, they have had to work very hard for them. Heroic came close in a couple of spots, but there's not really luck involved in this game so far. Seen so haven't earn, earned this 100%. You can absolutely see how Heroic have kind of tossed, tossed around their former competition, but it's got to help C9. They just built up so much resilience playing against literally the two best teams in Legends and knocking them out straight off. If you were going to have a training arc, and you know Shiro, he loves a good anime, this is how he would start it for the best possible chance at beating a former rival. Back to the mixed buy. And we'll see if C9 loosened their death grip on the match so far. Ooh, Nafany. Yeah, he, I feel like he saw that one coming. And so goes for the spray. Off the mark. Curious situation here for Heroics 5v4. It gives a gun to Shush. Yeah, they take it and leave, and ooh, they think it's going to be avoided. This is what I was talking about with the instant gambles from Heroic. They're very right. good at rotating back and forth. Sometimes you miss. Sometimes it's based off of full information, but you almost never have that. Really is a minefield playing against their CT side. It kind of depends right now. I mean, Shush is here causing, you know, causing a distraction, trying to scare them, but it's not working, actually. This is a pretty strong call from Nafani to tell his troops, okay, we just move forward, they're going to back out. They're actually bluffing. Kadian sees it, but gun wasn't ready. Still, he'll best Axile. Nade is destined for them, oh. but again, the More last three kills. rounds, all three of the last three rounds, it's an HE Nade kill at least. And 
now Jabby turns this one back Ooh. into a possibility by clearing out that player on ramp. It's going to draw Inter's attention back towards the flank. Shiro, he'll fixate inwards. And sure enough, this retake is inbound. There's no kit, so they're going to have to be quick. No and flat. Shiro, the fastest, hits his. Inter's finds flank. And Shiro tippity taps with the Tech 9 for a second in the post plant. What do you know? Flawless so far. Cloud 9, 8 0. That was the best possible plus plant you could ask for. Inter's always plays those situations so well, but Shiro cutting off kind of all three angles that they could approach from. And Inter is taking the strongest angle versus the ramp as well. Starts off a little scary, but Cloud 9, they call it the bluff on the rotation. If it was an overstacked A site, this could have absolutely been a different round. Shush doesn't do enough to scare him. I think this is an IGL victory just as much as it is an individual decision making victory for Cloud 9. Everything is really falling into place neatly. Now, Cloud9 had gone the max distance versus both FaZe and, uh, and uh, Na'Vi, and they were massive comebacks, and basically in every single one of their games. I'm sure they're feeling like they're overdue for a more one-sided affair. And knocking out all these T rounds means it gets very, very scary for Heroic. This was always a, there are some series in history like Liquid Astralis, for example, where, you know, they always had to give up a map. It was pretty much like a, a, there was always a free one for Astralis in their series. But in this series, there's never been a map that they could give up for free. 4v5, they'll have to succeed if they want that 9-0 start. Shiro welcoming the challenge here. Shush better be careful. Just leans back into the corner. It's actually a move here from Jabby. And a peek from Shush. It's going to be set on fire and falling away from that. Safely away with smoke. No full flanks coming in. No mid push. No A ramp aggression just yet. How will Cloud9 make their decision? Kadian posted up in the right position now. Well, loses his line of sight. He's trying to negate the smoke as much as possible, and that is definitely a great idea. Scary for him. Unconfirmed damage, uh, but... Now they, it seems like they know it's probably Katie and, you know, Molly Henny, if you think it's a rifler back there. Right. But he's not there at all. He's fallen away. Ooh, heroic. Yeah. Leaning back on this, giving yeah. up the ramp entirely, they're still getting... keeping two on B. Yeah, they're getting pressured. And not here with enough numbers to actually keep Cloud9 at bay. So this is the chance for the bomb to push in. CTs will set the site on fire, and their utility nearly non-existent. Tessess's grenade could find its intended target, but it's Hobbit on 91 health with the plant. So yeah, it's a ton of damage, but he gets away with it. 10 seconds to spare. No smoke, though, gives Tessess an easy pickup. Oh, aggressive but check push. Check the health. Three low on Heroic. This is a risk from Shiro. No one's crossing underneath him, and he's cutting off this headshot angle. The CTs, they're probably not going to be aware of this completely. He fades away. We saw what he did point blank last round. Well, Inters throws his smoke forward. C9 wastes no time. Axile, what a curious wall bang. All of a sudden, Kadian's cut out. It's low HP. Shiro snaps it onto Shush. Still nobody on that bomb. Axile, all the while, in the smoke. Goes oh, out, stops the defuse. Shiro comes in. Tech Nine's out again. No time. C9 to a ninth. And it comes down to the wire. Oh, but man. all of Heroic nearly dead. Jabby will hold on. Damn, that one was so tenuous, man. They're chewing on granite, but their teeth are made of diamonds. They are so good at working themselves out of this position. And Shiro and Axile now helping as a, a consistent storyline in the last couple of weeks, but both contributing very difficult frags in this spot. Axile had to be laser sharp with that precision to make sure to knock down that rifler who was defusing the bomb because he got traded instantaneously. Man, they need it, Axile. I think it's those kinds of moments that it just reminds you how critical he can be and how absent he truly was. But Tessess, just like last round, kicks this off 5v4. It's a bloodbath. Hailstorm of bullets both ways. That's crazy. Naphne comes in that with a MAC-10, of course, a rush strat once you see that because he had enough money to buy whatever he wanted to. Last round was a 4v5 victory already for Cloud9. Trying to see if we can do it again. Heroic leave the A site after winning a ramp quickly, trying to help out Shush, and he'll get some audibles, draw out some of his early utility. Still over a minute left on the round. 
And it's actually through mid that heroic go, an interesting mid-round call that looks like it'll be fruitful. Info gathered. Yeah, this is a great tempo. I mean, look how fast Yabby is here to walk the flank. They've got the bigger picture. Oh, but he's clearing out a ramp first. And if Hobbit gets up onto the short side, then this is all empty as far as he's aware. Hobbit, he's going to back up into his own death. Shiro found Shush in the meanwhile. Yeah, so Yabby's also one of the B players, but now Stown is here. Yeah, remember, they flanked with both. Good thing that Stown still keeps that proximity. Nice double kill off the Thomas. Shiro oh. on an AK in a clutch. Ooh, second headshot's clean, and he gets a little damage onto Jabby, but it's heroic with two alive and one round finally on the scoreboard. Yeah, there's going to be no shortage of kind of very ingenuity-based ideas that come through for Heroic, where you're like, oh, where is the gap? And then they find it, and here is one that they'll push through middle in a situation where C9 have been rocking back and forth between A and B, only incorporating mid when they had Axile on that weird time lurk towards the A side, maybe looking for him, and then getting a lot more. But making it a double flank was huge. And then making it a two-pronged attack where they clear out A and B at the same time helped with tempo and material. It's only one round from Heroic. It is a nice one, though. Heroic are not exactly back on their feet. Low on money, even though the buy is good. Whoa, timing. Yeah, Jabby gets pushed off here. Kadian, oh, he gets spotted. That might have been info on the op as well. They just decide to retreat off of this. Close call. Now Kadian's going to get a little nervous that they might be trying to take space on some of his friends. We'll see. He's coming around the smoke to disrespect this push, but it's a really good smoke. He can't even get around it safely. Naphne jumps up for a moment. Oh, there are some real mind games going on right here. Bad Molly. Gets caught out by the smoke, but C9 looking like they want to try this at the B site again. We've seen Shush with Jabby nearby. In this case, very on his own. Yeah, and Kadian starting to work back towards the A site. Boost already in position. He's waiting for the Axile peak beneath. Naphany, oh, it's the thinnest piece of cover, and they're going to go for the double boost on Shush. Oh. It's going to be 0 to 100 real quick. And the fact that he offers nothing puts all the pressure onto Jabby. Smokes in front. He has to hold. But the flash goes even deeper. There's a C9 player inside of that one. It's Naphany going over. He sees the barrel of Stout. That's a freebie. Finds Tessess. And Jabby finally into the kill feed. It's the first frag out from Heroic. But Shiro's going to close in on him. And just like that, the win from Heroic Sail goes silent. Damn, that is unreal. Man, Cloud9 are playing on another level at the moment. That was, there's so many layers to this round as well. This is. An amazing game so far, even though it's so lopsided. We had some good ideas from Heroic to try to counter the aggression. Too much info, though, was gained. This very slim margin. Too much info was gained inside of middle, where they spotted the rifler and Heaven pushed him back. Yabby, yeah, no damage. KD gets spotted inside of mid. He tries to make up for the fact that he gets spotted, comes around the smoke. Hobbit smokes is so proper that there's no way for him to do it, even if he's feeling very risky. And then the double boost to take out Shush. It's so hard to play against. This is world beater form from Cloud9. On stage, in a 2-0 match, in Legends. Looks like they're on the highway to the playoffs at the moment. Wow. Heroic gonna have to dig deep to derail them here on the first map. It was in Stockholm that Cloud9, then Gambit, were able to get top four. Ended by Navi. They missed out on playoffs in Antwerp, which was just a shocking result at the time. Surreal. It left us doubting their abilities on LAN. They pick up a victory in Dallas. We think, ah, oh, they've shook off that rust. Now they can really get rolling. And the Challenger stage just sowed such a seed of doubt in everybody's minds.
This literally looks as good as they've played online, and that's like the biggest compliment I can give to them. That's Point the best blank. Vertigo team in the world. It, it, this is unreal. Nafani not going to let off this one. And why would he? It is just pistols for Heroic, so a brutal reality. Oh, wow. nice headshot. Kadian doesn't get away. Stown's dead while Nafani's blind, and this three-piece is just going to crack open the A-site. Any hopes for Heroic's pistol round win? Gone. Javi doesn't even see anybody, just gets pelted by utility. And I've got to say, god damn, Cloud9, these nades have been immaculate. Yes. And it's actually really cool that we have not had a Cloud9 versus Navi match this year, nor a Cloud9 versus Heroic match this year. They waited, they waited, they bought their time. They finally get a chance to take down two of the top teams in the world. And what do you know? A huge comeback victory over C9 best of one and a massive opening thus far in the first 12 rounds of this Vertigo game. I'm just shaking my head every round in awe at the, the version of Cloud9 we're seeing right now. Unreal stuff. Perfect calls. There's no gaps. Utility's perfect. Aim is insane. It's not like they have some the CT bias that we could talk about to say that it's going to be some enormous comeback this time around. Wow. Down he goes. Right out the gate. Javi tries to get aggressive. Shiro on the upper ledge. It's a 5v4 in an instant. Napani's got to be careful. Has been caught by the occasional flash pistol push through that smoke. Plays it in cover. So far, so good. Yeah, indication of, you know, a little nervousness that Heroic could have gotten up close off that smoke. It gets refurbished with a frag. All the while, Cloud9 not too far away. Oh my god. Calling out their spots through the smoke. We'll see Tessas looking for a chance to get back into this. He finds a nice timing to take out Hobbit, who will be a straggler in a lot of these situations. But Shush goes down. Quad. Kadian quad. Oh, no. He Squad clears it out. But oh! he gets away with that. Kadian survives. What a miracle. And then Stown comes in to help, dude. Ooh. Kadian sucked it in, kept it slim, and slid around. He gets both those pickups. And that is a big call from Kadian the least likely person to be rifling inside the B site of all places. And he sends Tess down the ramp to clear things out, saying they think we're going B this time around. Let's call them out. Tess gets the lurker. They're on kind of full alert. And Shush doesn't have time to fall back because Cloud9 realize they know. And once they get in, however, Kadian is in the winning position. Even though someone crosses to his left, he probably should have got that kill a little bit more easily. He missed that timing by a hair. Shush right back. Into the lower play, Oof, drop down what was nearly into Shiro's scope. Kadian wants a piece of this bottom ramp, and point blank, Nafani's dead again. I feel like that has been the pick that goes back and forth, despite Cloud9's incredible T side. Yeah, you know Nafani is getting caught. It happens. It and hap at least C9 still recovering. That's the thing they've actually won 4v5 without Nafani, maybe two times now. Um, and for once, it feels like he could be expendable on this team. It felt like a lot rid on him to win the rounds with his aggressive plays, if it was lurking or entrying. But at the moment, Cloud9 have health, and then they have armor. And of course, money for days. So if Heroic are going to get anything more from the CT side, God knows three or four rounds would probably just be the biggest sigh of relief. After a bruising out of the gate, it's down. Easy does it. Nice clean kill versus Inters. Axile will hope to crack Shush back, but it's a tough peek because he probably presumes there's a player up above. What? And he could be ready for it. Axile not far off, but Javi, sure enough, dodges those first bullets through wood, and the 11 health of Shiro should never be enough. Cue up a third one for Heroic. Yeah, they're looking for four in this half, which is still kind of an abject failure, to put it lightly. Uh, for the CT side, Cloud9 have enough money to buy next round. Kind of feels like only a matter of time before Heroic tried to started to figure something out. Again, it's not as if they're playing incredibly badly. I'd say a lot of the rounds Cloud9 won were very hard. They just won them back to back to back to back. And now Shiro, yeah, at least found a spot to chill.
still going to be a ton of work to do to get back into this game if you're heroic. I mean, we'll see if they can play hard enough on T side. But for now, it's just can they can they just lock down a fourth, make a game of this? And I think even if they have a good match that doesn't end in a win, it's going to affect the outcome of the series. You know, ending with no rounds in this game and just thinking, well, maybe Vertigo makes the difference now that we fast forward, lose Train, which was a map that we could take Cloud9 out. Historically, Cloud9's team hasn't changed at all, and Heroic were at one point the longest standing five-man roster in the top 10. They made a move in replacing Refresh with Yabby. So they wanted a little something more. I think we've seen that from Jabby from time to time, but also initial growing pains. Yes. Which I then think puts his consistency fairly into question. But here we go, final round of the first half. No op, of course, for Heroic. It's just three riflemen waiting on the ramp and Shiro waiting for a chance to strike one down. Who shows skin? Kadian does. He comes running in. Oh. Caught off by that deep angle oh, from Napani. I thought he had mollied, but... A little bit of an error that could have cost Heroic what might be a critical fourth round. Will it even make a difference? We'll find out in the second half. Four kills away from 12. We've seen a lot of 12 threes as of late, but it's generally from CT sides and usually on Ancient. Risky situation, but Stown realizes he needs to be out here to Do get something. anything happening. And uh, he doesn't win his duel, gets caught off on the timing. They're splitting on both sides. Two CTs still back here waiting. They could do this. If they catch him off guard, keep it clean. It's theirs for the taking. Tess has one, Javi's chance, and Hobbit out from short, trades it back again. Wow. So we're going to have to see Shush come through with a 1v3. Nothing to save for, everything to fight for. And the grenade that chips away some damage, but he at least stops that bomb. It's and it's on force top of default. Either Hobbit or Nafany forward, and Nafany's barely alive, so Shush is putting up his best attempt at a critical, or at least what could be, important 1v3. Nafany onto the plant, Shush off the flash, looks to press in, no time no for time. this. Nafany, no time for this. No, Shush just brains him, and with that, it's three to four. Heroic with a little bit more, but will it even be enough? Do they have any chance on Vertigo? We'll find out in just a moment.
find ourselves here on the brink of what could be Cloud9's early victory in this very important best of three series versus Heroic. The first time they've faced off so far this year, and it's a major playoffs spot on the line. This Vertigo game, a bit of a blowout with an 11-4 lead after a T-half. Meanwhile, on the other stream, we've got an overtime game on Vertigo because apparently FaZe play it now. Yeah. Or it's a like a it's like Cloud9 energy from Antwerp where they pick Nuke into Fang Phase and then they, they lost. lost. But yeah. that is overtime. So yeah. great chance for B and E. Good and, chance uh, to open up a squad stream or a second monitor if you've got the luxury. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, well, let's see. Four, let's see four rounds is enough here yeah. for Heroic. I mean, that's definitely a huge difference between four and three and two, or it seemed like it could be. Let's see what they got. Pobbit was instrumental in the T side pistol. Four kills picked up by him to give Cloud9 that early start. And right now, they just haven't even seen a thing. Tess tries to press in. Oh, Naphany, back of two heads. Shush, he takes Hobbit spot, bombs drop. Naphany's in with three. He sees the player four from Naphany, doing everything with that Glock, oh. and he gets himself the ace. The pistol arrow pushes through and gives Cloud9 that start that could be Heroic's end. Oh, happy for those chaotic moments as we saw in the first half, rushing him up the A ramp, sometimes dying, sometimes not, but always looking for a fight. Man. Naphany, I can't believe he gets that 2K on them crossing in this corner. It's just nuts. And then one falling from the sky over top of the smoke. Wow, dude, that's such a sick shot. Yeah. Shush's feet not even on the ground. Moving target popped. And this feels good for Naphany. Oh, dude. Smash like a clay pigeon. Enters and Axile. Hell of a combo here behind the green. Fast push in from Heroic, but Axile's just gonna continue to rack up these frags. Safe to say, he's back. Or so he was. Shush in with the Tech 9 kill. They've lost track of Kadian, who also gets one. And as he hunts that second, will be dropped to a quarter health. We've got Cloud9 all over the place. Bomb needs to be picked back up in Kadian. It's a desperate position, not just for him, but for all of Heroic. A nine round deficit, C9, three away from a dominant win on Vertigo. Yeah, definitely no money here at Heroic. I mean, you know, this is where weird buying decisions could come in. They might be playing from 14, however, and just seeing what happens. But instant fallback protocols, Axel doesn't even have another thought in his mind. It's like going back to Jenny, joining up with my teammate. We know how to win this round. Worst case, the bomb goes down. In best case, it doesn't, and that's what we what we see right there. So, minimal investment here for Heroic. Axel once again just running it backwards. I want to say it again, but in history, there were no free maps in this veto, competitive all the way through, and that's what made this rivalry so exciting. Yeah. So, if Heroic don't make Vertigo interesting, it feels like C9. They're going to feel like the best team and the team who won the most important matchup in their history as well. And, and I mean, you know, the most incredible part of all this is that while we're watching Cloud9 just sweep through this legend stage and in an unprecedented way dominate Heroic, who have looked like the next best team so far this stage, barring, you know, arguably Furia. Bro, FaZe are on the brink of elimination. Yeah. We have Vitality struggling, Navi is struggling. Who theoretically else would we put ahead of Cloud9? If the buff of this run is real, who stands in their way to stop them? Yeah, I mean, they're the, they're the outside team. You know, Heroic are also an outside team in this regard. So FaZe, Vitality, and uh, FaZe, Vitality, and Navi, they're the land winners and the tier one land winners. And then on the outside of that Heroic, I mean, they want a smaller land but still a land, and uh, Cloud9 won Dallas with a kind of a weaker field, but a bigger land overall, yeah. and they can consistently beat some of the top teams. Heroic have a great veto versus Navi, that's been historic, but Cloud9, they can they can beat FaZe, they can beat, uh, well, they can beat FaZe, they can beat even Heroic, I mean, these are all the teams to watch, even if Cloud9 somehow feel like the somehow underdog. Bomb goes down, it's all oh. good. Okay. I mean, you bring up the fact that Heroic can beat Navi. They can also just, they have a great head-to-head -head versus Vitality. Yes. You know, so Heroic will definitely be poised as kind of next up. But it's just crazy that there's this massive of a gap between Cloud9 and Heroic. Yeah. And again, at least on Vertigo. Yep. At and least that, on Vertigo. But the thing but is that the other maps, they're not going to be maps that, that 
Kuro can guarantee or win every time, right. or even if we roll back time, there's just there was no, no free freebies. map. It was they would trade their map picks all the time. They would trade the deciders all the time. Never before seen such domination between C9 and Heroic. And it's not like Heroic don't know how to play Vertigo, of course. For sure. That's the other thing. They have two wins, but it's probably by Mahone, they're weaker teams. It's like Sangal and another roster. I mean, it's not even close to the quality of competition for C9. C9 chopped down this gun round. It's going to be a bruised ego for the heroic camp going into the next one. So nice to see Tess start this with a clean frag on Naphany. Hobbit burned out, and Tess looks like somebody's going to step up. They'll have to. The individuals need to be so incredibly sharp. There is a near non existent margin of error for them to work with. And two clean entries with a bomb plant bodes well. They waited for this gun round. It had to look good. And congratulations, it does. Yeah, Cloud9 go very light on the site. It's a contact explode from Heroic. They just go off of one flash and molly on sandbags just to clear out the most important positions. But in order to not waste time, they turn that corner and don't actually physically clear them. And that's just enough. So it's a nice idea to win a fifth. It's one of many that they'll need, though, to win the map. Very tense day. SS extends out to the left as well, just smashes Hobbit back before he has a chance. Yeah. Individually, Tess goes ahead and wins the round here for Heroic, but it's going to give Groove a chance to offer input. There's so much history and so many big comebacks in this um, matchup as well that if Cloud9 stopped trying at any point, they, they will lose. They will lose, just like they caused the teams they played against to lose like five or six games so far uh, in Rio. And they know that. Yeah, it is kind of spectacular just how many comebacks Cloud9 have had to mount. But uh, the payoff, I feel like, is finally here, right? A strong, convincing, dominant start. One that would have you writing off heroic every day of the week. And look at the stat lines. I mean, even with Nafany joining up, who has had a pretty Pretty crazy couple of days as well. I believe a big map versus Navi. Or was it Vitality on Overpass? That may have been in Challengers. Man, there's been so many huge games happen. All right, Heroic. Attempting inside a middle. Hobbit. Oh, I think he lost focus there for a second. And enters with a Fomus. Only picks up the one. Well, the only B player is down in the depths. All right, and he can sit and try to wait. Oh, had a chance. He's, He's just, just watching him pass. Made? Decent. Tess low. Shiro finds Kadia. And Axile's still alive. Right? They're going to be aware of the threat. Axile slides back down. That nade could be destined oh. for Tess but he gets away fully health. But he's still maintaining the most important post plant position and knows it. So he's going to fall back and not die. But now Ooh. the swing comes out. He can't get his frag. Tried to fight for it tooth and nail, ultimately costs him. Shiro expectant of somebody over construction, but it's not there. Nafany will extend, make sure nobody's there along the rafters, and a little incendiary for the up close. That's nice. I think Nafany he now it. Oh. comes out, finds Shush. And of course, it's time that's going to make the There's a smoke on Shiro. big difference. I feel like it's he's already gone. Get, he's just trying to get kills. Yeah, they missed that chance. But rack up the costs. Why not? You'll give Heroic a sixth. But of course, it's just Tess left. And so, again, huge lead. But Heroic are, in fact, winning rounds now, something yes. they could barely do in the first 15. Absolutely. And it's a couple of explodes where there's two unanswered trades instantly. Do you think that was a missed Molotov? I think he was, he was aiming at. Um, at default, and it wasn't okay. even up. Because it did clear close, right? It right did, behind the wall. but it bounced off something, and uh, he could have he could have just thrown it right on the ground there. Style points. Yep. Or something like that. Stown hasn't had a, a great match overall, not a great first half. It's an important part of this team, of course. Yes. I feel like sometimes doesn't even get the credit that he's due. 
Everybody knows he's good, but that sixth gear of his can be massive. And an up kill. Hobbit. Ooh, hot. Oh, Naphany got a frag here as well. Okay, Hobbit goes down. Comes back. The way of Stown. Jabby waiting. Whoa, Ooh, Shiro. Yo, they're assuming this is clear. Heavy presence here from Shiro, but he has the AWP. He'll miss one, but Shiro, if he peeks this, it doesn't see anything. They're walking back, and Yabi's like, crap, he actually just showed himself. Listen, not the best guns here. So, should be winnable for Stown. Traded, though. Naphany turns attention back. It's Naphany versus Katie, and I love this duel. It is. 22 kills to the 9, and Yabi opens up the B site. So, actually, Kadian's... I think Kadian's waiting. I don't know if... if Oh, he's just trying to draw the rotation. They will hopefully forget about Kadian as far as he's concerned. And that, yeah, they yep. will. Oh, it works. And then Jabby, just like that, it's gone. Utility shown towards the A site. Nafani now understands exactly what's happened. And Kadian gets that op up as Jabby sprints to come and help him. Kadian's able to exit onto short. CT utility is Shiro with the smoke. He also has the kit. So that's going to free up Nafani, who's having a hell of a game. 22 kills, 9 deaths, actually outperforming Shiro. And Kadian locked in on the scope, bomb beyond the halfway point, and that smoke grenade actually goes forward towards the top of ramp. So nobody's going to be able to just blanket that bomb. Kadian peeks oh, out. It's being covered. It's they, being diffused. They and have to Kadian swing. comes in, then they turn. Shiro, Ooh. without watching, will find Kadian, but not fast enough to get the second onto Yavi. Heroic. Even with that, only have half of the rounds of Cloud9. Yeah, no, they're working hard every single step of the way, but they are winning. They are winning. Trades don't go down, it gets very scary, but a nice mid-round between Jabby and Kadian to pull the defense apart. And the more you make people rotate, the more they get into rotator positions. And those positions are outside of the site, outside of smokes. And that's what they wanted. Not the greatest buy. An axe out with an off, actually. Okay. Finds tag on down. <laughs> All right, let's see it. And double off. I, I feel like that is a really great answer. Super welcome on Vertigo as well. Open lines on B and the A site, especially versus lurky teams. You want to off as much as possible because they'll walk out angles and try to cheat, use less utility. And we have seen that uh, with Heroic. Contact exploding middle, contact exploding A site already. And even B. Now so sneak. if that's out of the repertoire, what do Heroic fall back on? They haven't done a full standard exec. In that last round, you know, boils down to a bit of a gimmicky decision. It's not a coincidence that Axel goes to the peak first. He's trying to instruct them that, you know, you don't want to do this. So what are you going to do? Of course, the folly of two ops is harder retakes. Oh my god, Bad News Eagles won. No way. Oh my god, they did. Juan Flatro, 38 frags, oh and they won god. Vertigo. Now, of course, phase on Vertigo. Big question mark with that, yeah, but well, still, a win's a win. Yeah, except they're 0-2, and they picked Vertigo. 0-2 and map down. Yeah. Napani. Ooh, baby. Aye. He's alive. Yeah, he's alive and inside That's that important. molly. Oh, 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 I love this. Oh, we're getting cheesy. Hobbit, nicest guy in the world, but not when it's time to kill. Although, despite the position, comes up with nothing. There's just a ton of damage that's been done to Heroic, and they're in the 22nd mark. This is going to be a crunch into the A site. They'll have to go. C9 on the brink of 15. Drop the bomb. Napani turns back. Kadian's going to get him, but Shiro still holds this line, waiting for Kadian to turn that corner. Insta headshot. Axile comes through with another op impact, and now it's eight map points. Yeah, so they instantly made them uncomfortable with that second op. They forced them into a round that they didn't really want to play. Nathany continuing to individually stand above the rest with his rifle on short, just simply staying alive. They're even able to sacrifice Hobbit, right? One bad spray there, and it's still a very sound position here for C9 as the clock bleeds down. This is not where Heroic had been comfortable. They got punished. And despite a few nice rounds here from Heroic, it's still Cloud9 looking fine, right? Looking just fine. The big scheme, of, you know, grand scheme of things, those three rounds on this T side will just mean nothing. This yeah. is still a blowout. This is Cloud9 from the get-go. And because of that damage, it's Heroic instantly broke. Yeah. Those three rounds, just despite extending play here on Vertigo, will not change the tale in any way. This will be a story of how Cloud9, out of nowhere, blew Heroic out of the water on Vertigo. A map and a head-to-head -head that's always close, it seems. Analysts were convinced, tight games both times. Everybody was basically on the same page. And 
now here we are. 15-7. A weaselly buy for Heroic. Yeah. And they just shove that AWP inside of middle, and if it's not going to be fast, this is actually a really great gap to take, I feel like, for C9. With the AWP to the rifle to lead behind it, and in front of it, I should say, and could potentially flank later on if Heroic take too much time. A little weaker here on the B site, so, you know, a retake might be difficult. Heroic will move in fast. And the CTs just decide to come right back. They know there's not a lot of utility for here for Heroic to fake. Axile loses line of sight, scopes back in. Some spam into Tessess, missed shot from Axile. There's a lot of bodies in what is a very little bomb site. And Shush, it's right there if he wants it. Pull the trigger, Axile's dead. Shiro, all the while, finding Jabby first. And Axile, I mean, his time is limited. Jesus. Shush is still waiting. He had to wait the first smoke out, he waits the second smoke out, and then he gets his reward. Of course, there's no flank here. CTs press in, over, through, green, they'll go. Kadian back behind sight, bomb again, ticking quick, and Kadian holds on. He's got his teammate, but Hobbit can't get both. Woo. Kadian keeps his troops alive. That's, of course, one down, but seven more to go if yep. they even want OT. Yeah, they, they fought hard, but yeah, there it is. You know, retaking with two ops, quite difficult, actually. They had to move slow. Axel was just in a weird spot, sitting inside of smoke, waiting that out. As time went down, Flash wasn't very good on the retake as well. I mean, a very calm position was not blind. And uh, Kadian and Co. are able to trade down effectively. Heroic with just another fast one. I think this one was legible from Cloud9, but they still just couldn't actually execute on the retake. Probably wanted to keep a rifler alongside the AWP. Maybe wanted to pull off that flank sooner. So they actually take advantage of the space left on the map. So that's kind of the worst round we've seen from Cloud9 so far this game, even when we contrast it with all the ones they've lost. They play it a little bit timid, and it's kind of expensive. And now they'll have to save. Napity, sorry bud. Not destined for much here in round 24. This will be Heroic's chance to get one back over. And you know, I feel like being this beaten up, this bruised, go ahead. Have some fun. <laughs> Run through these CTs. Get that ninth one on the scoreboard. Don't get knifed in the back. Oh, Inters. Oh, <laughs> shush. Keeps it on a swivel. He'll be the only player to go down. But Knife again. would only take one hit there. Yeah. Should have done it for efficiency's sake. Still, it's a round win for Heroic, but do you think it feels really that good in the face of this adversity? Nah. Work set out for Heroic, sure enough. Buyback in from Cloud9. It's a little light on utility, but it's got most of the trimmings. To note, no kit. And Shush, looking for the fast move. Bottom of B stairs entirely on his own. We've got a middle play set up. Oh, Shiro's waiting for this. Shot comes in. It's not good. Flash is perfect. Spaced just right. Two players encroach. And they, they try to set up so they could clear out the B steps a little bit earlier with even the smoke down. No one shot back at Shush, so they may be able to go back into it. But I, I feel like that means it's a little bit obvious to C9 what might be coming their way. The, however, Shiro didn't actually see anything inside of middle. Three now. Flash isn't great. Shiro's tight angle is perfect. Hobbit blocking this off. Yep. 5v3. Hobbit holding. Smoke in the front of him. Heroic somehow looking for an open, but Hobbit's just going to sit inside of this. And this could be that insurance policy, right? No matter what goes down elsewhere around him, at some point, Hobbit's going to pop up when nobody expects it. Yeah, now they forget about him. They want to fight over construction, not to mention additive to this. We've got the off peak from Shiro, then Hobbit plays his hand. He'll get no scope by Kadian, but that's the only thing that goes back their way. 